Yo, welcome back to the High Shot Haven, man. It's me, John, to bring you more for the content. If you didn't get a chance to catch the live, it was very informative, man. The last few lives we done ran just to really seem like they didn't help some people. And like I said, man, got that uh, low securement on the uh, on the playlist. You know, go through there and check out some stuff. If you're new to the channel, feel free to comment. Hey, like, subscribe, man. Just let me know. And hey, let's go, y'all. Damn, you already know what I said about it, man. And it, man. Free. Check us out on Instagram, man. Follow us, Nova on the Pride LLC. You see a little something that you might not get to see on the channel all the time. And don't forget the one hour consultation still live and popping. Yo, what, $40 via Cash App? Uh, uh, cash App, dollar sign J B U T L E R 357. Leave your number in the four line. You know, I'm gonna get at you. Like I said, man, it's still jumping. We're still helping people, man. Feel free to subscribe. Hit that bell hit that bell so you can get the notification we jump off on the live boy can get what it pays to discover hey check the link in the description rts all right let's get down with the get out you know we're gonna take for we're gonna go ahead and knock it out this video we coming to you about all bad action all bad hoods we're gonna do 8k's because don't nobody in the check get that set up too often so if you got 8k or bad Man, this one for you. Hey, last time I, I came on the live and I did a video, I told y'all, man, I was, I'm using the Lamar 30 foot gooseneck 14 ply 16 inch rail. Hey, had the time that wasn't looking quite coke steady and it ended up um, going down. We had a little air to it, but yeah, I saw the tires looking suspect. So when it actually went down, one of the uh, belts actually wrapped around the axle when the tire went down. So I, I picked it up and I was about to change the tire and I looked at it I, I said, man, that drum ain't sitting quite right, man. It looked like it's about, it couldn't have been no more than about an eighth of an inch out, which most people would have went in and adjusted it, flushed the oil out, maybe put some more oil in it. I'm going to rebuild his axle for these people on YouTube because I don't know if they just have really seen the oil bath AK that ain't just that prevalent. So I'm going to rebuild it. Like, so I'm going to take you out with me as I do it. And, and one of the first things you're going to notice is when I actually take that cap off and uh, release that pro tip, a hey, two wrenches, get your adjustable wrench. Now this is a large side wrench. The one that's on the drum, it looks small, but that's actually a 15 inch long. Uh, adjustable crescent wrench and uh, the one that I actually use to take the cap out just for leverage and having a smooth turn uh, was uh, 28 inches with a uh, three and a half to five inch opening on that these ain't no small wrench like I said get you some tools but like I said I use this stuff for other stuff but at the same time come in handy yes they do have a wrench strictly for the tight glass cap and I could have used that but I ain't had one because I don't got oil bath actually I, I rock with that grease on the on the uh, medium do that but anyway first thing first get the cap out big thing about all this whole job is clean clean the number one word you're gonna be looking for in your vocabulary when you're doing anything dealing with bears and hooves anything like that is clean everything gotta be clean so i probably went through like five cans of brake cleaner doing this stuff and some of this stuff is sped up and you know i you know start out by cleaning the cap out and all that stuff because it's, it's got to be cleaned out eventually anyway so i just set up sprayed most of the excess out of there and just you know kind of started a little pool of brake cleaner in there to dissolve some of that you know metal and uh, uh oil that was you know pretty muddy looking so i had to get that out of there gotta get it out of there so you know proceed to do that 
First thing you're gonna do, uh, there is a retaining clip that is an anti-spin clip that fits on the groove at the end of the axle and fits over the nut that holds the bearing, the races and everything onto the hub. Uh, first thing you're gonna get that safety clip out of the way with a flathead screwdriver should be pretty easy. And you'll notice that as I do that and I pop it off, you know, I actually go back and spray cleaner in there, more cleaner because I'm about to take the nut out, but you know what I'm saying, before you take the nut out, you want to make sure the threads are as clean as possible to give you the easy way of taking it out, okay? Now once you get that out, you're going to have your spacing washer. It's an anti-spin washer that fits on the flat side of the axle. It has a groove that it fits on the axle, so it actually sits there and the um, actual bearing race rides against it and it doesn't spin because it's locked onto the axle in a groove. So next thing you're gonna do is gonna you're gonna relieve the tensions on the brakes. A lot of times uh, these are never just brakes. So every time you back the trailer up and apply the brake, it tightens the shoes onto the drum. And when you apply a brake, it actually releases and creates a small gap so you can not have a dragging brake. But over time, there's a groove that wears into the drum and the shoes go in the groove so the, the drum won't just slip off. So you have to adjust the brake shoes in to loosen them and then you'll be able to slide the drum off. Sometimes it's easier said than done. But like I said, if you adjust the brakes in far enough, it will come off. Now, you know, that just, just take a minute to realize that um, when this tire was going down, I was completely aware of all this stuff. And once I realized that uh, when I went to change the tire that the bearing had moved and the actual um, drum had moved and there was there was play there, I, I proceeded to chain that axle up and bring it home and do the work the right way. I could have put a tire on there, but I think in about 20 miles with the level of grit that was in there, if I had to do that about another 20, 20 miles, I probably lost the wheel. And you don't want that type of stuff, man. One of these wheels come off 70, 80 pounds, man, flying in somebody's car at 70 miles an hour, man, you're gonna have a serious problem. So, you know, like I said, with all this stuff, we're doing this stuff for safety. Safety is first and foremost. Cleanliness is gonna prove to be your best friend with this stuff because a small amount of grit, a small amount of sand getting in these bearings, spinning at high speed, there's no oil that can stop a piece of sand from getting in between two rollers and, and, and messing the rollers up. So like I said, clean, 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 clean. <clears throat> Little tip too, as you wipe that shaft down with the, uh, with the cloth, um, Grab it by the threads on the end, spray it down, and turn that cloth counterclockwise like you were unscrewing a bolt, and you'll notice that some of the grit and grime that is actually in the threads will come out, um, similar to unscrewing a bolt. It will, it will actually clean the threads. Uh, you got to You just got to make sure those threads, all that stuff. Is very clean because you're gonna encapsulate this stuff and, and oil will be flowing so the oil will actually continue to wash those parts of any grit and grime that may be on them and send that in the bearing if it's not clean. Clean, 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 y'all. Now, one good thing, like I said, that the, on, on the um, <clears throat> on some captures in the earlier part of the video, the seal really wasn't compromised because the amount of movement wasn't enough to actually bypass oil from the seal onto the brakes, which is what usually happens. So there was still oil and everything in the axle when I pulled it, so the brakes didn't get wet. So like I said, next, next pro tip, hey, place the drum in the rim and tire upside down and just drop it in there. It's gonna give you way better leverage on everything you're doing, a way steadier surface, and you don't have to try and control this drum from rolling around while you're trying to work. Uh, you know, seal puller, man, that's regular in the old ordinary seal puller, man. Seal puller, uh, yeah, a dead blow hammer. 
just because the paper sledge is just really old kill for that right there. Dead blow hammer, knock it in there and get that, get that seal puller underneath that seal. Uh, I also would like to take note uh, that the seal and bearings that we will be replacing it with are made in the USA. Uh, and, the tr and the seals are triple seal to the hub and triple seal to the axle shaft. Um, they have triple lip seals. The old ones did because my partner he know what's going on when he got his when he got his trailer service last time they put triple seals in it and I, and I think that's really the way to go. Uh, the single lip seal, most time you find it in the factory axle. That ain't what we doing. If you can if you can put something else better back in there, get the, get the triple seal. That don't cost that much. Now, like I said, with that with that color. And the way that oil looked and everything with that axle, when I took that cap off, I'm glad I didn't run that. You know, it would it would have completely eaten itself, man. It was like a metallic mud substance instead of oil that was in there. And I checked the oil every single day, so I know it was oil in there, and it didn't look like that. So I know the bearing had started to wear, but like I said, you catch it. Players type stuff, like I said, you gotta have some tools out here. You're gonna use that uh, bearing race press set so you can, you can knock those races out. We will never advise you putting brand new bearings on an old race. You just, just, just doesn't work. It's gonna chew itself up because these things wear together. So, like I said, your, work, your race and bearing <coughs> pull up. Bearing punch set to flat flat chisel. I got the other race out with a flat chisel because of the way it is. The dies for the uh, for the bearing tool doesn't fit in there, so you get your flat cold chisel and knock the race out on the other side. And you got two surfaces that need cleaning again. Clean all that stuff out, and then you're gonna drive your new races in with the bevel side facing out that's very important you don't want to put those races in upside down the bearing will never go in you might make sure you put the beveled angled side facing outward so if you're looking down inside the drum you should see uh, like a, a pretty close to a 45 degree angle on that race going down into the actual hub so like I said when you look at it just make sure you you put it in with the with the the thinner side facing up and the fatter side facing down and you pretty much can't go wrong um also when you get the new bearings and races out and you know I sat them out and everything like that but you're gonna still want to get brake clean and clean those brand new bearings very well. Some of this stuff is shipped with uh, different anti-rust uh, or rust inhibiting coatings. Sometimes they just put lithium on there. Sometimes they put oil on there. Sometimes they put uh, something in the process where they dip this bearing in something and they, and they send it to you. Sometimes it's completely dry. But we're not going to take any chances that any debris or lint or anything from the packing material, anything in there. So you're going to clean those and you're going to use your race, your race driver, put the correct size die on there. Make sure that thing is perfectly flat and drive it in. Then you can drop your bearing in. Also drive your seal in with the same kind of installation tool. Make sure it's flat and flush all the way around. And you'll have that rear bearing and seal installed. That would be the bigger of the two bearings. It only fits on one side. It goes one way. Can't really mess it up. Like I said, flip that drum over. We're gonna grab our uh, tool and show you that we did install a new race. Look at the camera, look down in there, that's a brand new race. It's driven down flush onto the second step. It's sitting on the third step. 
is completely bottomed out where it's supposed to be. I will go back in with some more brake cleaner and clean that again. Oh, definitely. Now, let's go back down and dress this shell. Preliminary cleaning is pretty clean, but we're going to automatically go over that again. I'm going to go over that again. But, just to look at it, it's pretty clean. And like I said, spray clean does not leave a residue, so that, that's always a good thing. Now, like I said, with the older bearings, they really didn't fail. They were going to be chewed up if I had a ran it with the metallic stuff that had already been filed off in there. But I didn't. I inspected the bearings and everything. They were not scarred. But what you have to remember is bearings and races wear together. So you have to keep these bearings and races together for life. So like I said, you could pack them in for spares. You never know what might happen on the road. You might need that. And 8K stuff is hard to find on the road. Put them up. It might be just what gets you home and you might just have to end up packing it in grease and, and, and putting something together on the road and making it really happen and, and getting the load done or getting on to the house or getting out of that storm, whatever you got to do. Yeah, you hold on to those. If they're not destroyed, they're not really bad damage, you hold on to them. So, all right, let's address this shell. I'll just say preliminarily, it is clean. I could put it together right now, but, you know, just sheer paranoia alone will make you spray it again and again. And I had to delete some of this because I, I, I really, I... <sighs> I really cleaned it. I, I really cleaned that axle. So, like I say, you want to remove any signs of varnish on the race and seal surfaces. The threads and the tip of the axle have to be clean and free of sediment and debris. But your main concern needs to be where the seal rides at the back of the, uh, at the rear part of the shaft, where the step is and the, se the second step right behind that directly behind the threads you really need to be concerned with the threads directly behind the threads and that third step at the rear of that shelf with that seal and that second second large race inner race on that bearing ride you need to be concerned about that if you have any varnishing or any type of pitting or anything like that you may want to hit it with a slight build an emery cloth and some brake cleaner just to remove some surface rust or possibly the varnish on there but this this actual end was was relatively clean because i didn't give it a chance to get hot so it really didn't varnish so okay for all you guys that when the magnet fall off and it's sunday or you're on the side of the road and you don't have any clips to put that magnet back on go get you a piece of 14 16 12 gauge wire and, and run that piece of wire through the hole, put the, push the magnet on, on the slider, with the spring behind it like it's supposed to be, depress the spring fully, run your wire through the hole in the slider, tie it in a bow, and release the magnet. That will hold that magnet on that slider. That will hold that magnet until you install it. That will hold that magnet while they ride down the highway. And by it being made of copper, it will not cause any vertical uh, problems with the electrical system because the, the brake magnet coil runs through the outside of the magnet, not the inside of the magnet. So it will not cause a problem with your brakes or anything. It will not scrub the drum. It will not come in contact with it. So, like I say, feel free to try that one time and it'll get you out of the jam. And I ain't gonna be honest, I'm just be honest with you. I done did it when I could have went and got some clips before because it's just it's the same thing at work. But that's just a little slight tip. So once you get that all taken care of, you know, apply your a small film of oil onto the inside of the axle seal that's on the drum. I see sometimes when I see people will coat their shaft in oil or they'll put the, the oil on the actual shaft back there where the seal is and you need to understand something. A seal job is meant to wipe away oil. 
So you want to put that oil on the seal so it wipes the oil across the surface as you install it. If you if you apply the oil to the to the sealing area first and slide the dry seal on there, sure it will lubricate it going on there. But you just push that amount of oil off the back of the seal. Now there's something wet back there. You may have to go in there and clean that, which is not going to be accessible because you have a dust cover on the back. So apply the oil to the seal, not to the shade. Because you end up with centrifugal before slinging that little bit of oil out on the brakes. We don't want to do that. Okay. Alright. Now, like I said, as you install that, push it up on until you see where, where the seal engages and spin the drum and it will roll the seal onto the shaft. You may have to spin it side counterclockwise, clockwise, bring it back, and then just feel it go on. You'll feel it bottom out and, and you'll know. Like I said, you'll know. And then you'll also know by the fact that your bearing, your front bearing, once you install it, it will sit in there flush with your races and everything will be. And, and, and the inner races will sit on the shaft as it should and you will have the threads exposed to add your nut and, and compress that axle uh, seal on there and, and set your clearances for your bearings. I always want to double check. Just make sure you bottom out as much as you can bottom it out and then we'll do the rest since it's installed and on the shaft we'll do the rest of the tightening and the compressing of the actual seal and the bearing and everything for for a, a, at a later time with the actual nut and assembly on and set up our clearance so put that front bearing in there you can see it's it's a very precise fit, so it has to line up flush that with a parallel, and it will go on that shaft. But like I said, if it's any way type of way crooked, or you got a little debris or some surface rust on that shaft, it can stop that bearing from slipping in like you think it should. But like this, it just was a dry fit. So there you go, it slips in. We see that the rollers made up with the made up with the race and it rides directly on the race that bearing and race looks like a one piece unit everything lines up a flush you feel me? look good all right so now we're going to go into reverse order and put the uh washer that fits on the end of the shaft that doesn't turn we're going to refit that back on to the shaft and replace the nut replace the nut and proceed to tighten now you don't want to put 50 or 100 pounds of torque on this thing or anything like that what you want to do is use your feeling you gotta be able to feel this stuff. Put the, put the wrench. That's why we don't use power tools on any part of this job. You don't use them. Put the wrench on the nut. Tighten the nut up and spin the drum. When you tighten the nut up, as you spin the drum, you will feel the resistance start to come, not only on the tightening of the nut, but free spin on the drum it'll start to have a little more drag on it. But what you want to do is tighten that nut up until it stops. Basically, it feels like it's tight. And if you tighten it up some more, you'll be actually probably crushing the bearing or something. That's, that's the feeling you want. Once you get to the point where it is actually tight and it feels like it's going far, you're going to start to crush something. I want you to take it about another half a turn tighter. At that point in time, your bearings, your races, the, the clips that hold that in place inside of that assembly, and your seal will be fully compressed as far as it will go onto the shaft. Then you take note <clears throat> to back it off a half a time.
check and see if the nut is still tight. This adjustment is pretty critical. Now, what we want, since this is a oil bath axle, is little to no movement because the oil is going to flow through here. But we do want some play. We want little to no movement, but we want just a hair, just a hair of movement, just a hair. I mean, really, just a hair. So once you back off that half turn, you're going to check the nut with your hand and see if the nut is still tight. If the nut is still tight, back it off an eighth of a turn. Reinstall your safety clip. Spin the drum. And you're almost done. Now, I played with the clearances. I went back and forth with it for a while. I settled on about... Uh, about maybe two thirds I'd say I'd say two fifths of a turn man to be honest with you but it's all based on the feel you just can't up and say a half a turn or a quarter turn it's really what, what it feels like to be honest with you and just want to let you know that that axle nut on the end of that axle is not meant to be torqued by any means and most of the time when you check them they're just hair above snug a little bit above hand tight when they sit all the way in but do note that you're gonna want to run these for about maybe 30 40 miles road test come back you know, jack the trailer up check your oil level check for play rocket tires and, and get that truck trailer in the air and rock them tires and just check and see if anything has worn in to the point where it needs readjusting. If it needs readjusting, hey, put your train pan down, pop the cap out, readjust them, uh, fill them up with fresh oil, make sure there's no crazy wear, no metal fragments coming off or anything like that, and you're good to go. But always check your work. That's gonna be one of the big old things about all this stuff at the end of the day. You won't check behind yourself, even if the shop doing it, you won't check behind these people when they do this stuff right here. Because like I say, it's 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 not one of those things you wanna play with. You know, it's one of those things that it is quite possibly could be a life and death situation when it comes down to you on this highway and sending very large projectiles into traffic. That, that ain't that ain't gonna work. But like I said, the word for the day on this job right here, clean, 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 clean. So I had that that cap soaking in brake cleaner for a while. I put a new O-ring on it, of course, and <clears throat> continued to spray it down and be as paranoid as possible and just like flood the whole thing with just with brake cleaner. And this stuff is is, is high vox, so it it, 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 it evaps off very fast. Uh, less than two or three minutes that that all that stuff is bone dry so you don't have to worry about it doing anything icky with the uh with the new oil and you know just as a a, a note uh when i do serve with oil axles i choose to use the local hub or you know, i don't know what everybody will use some people got their own concoctions and this and that and the other but it has been pretty pretty good in this situation where i've used it and it has a high film strength and it does clean very well and it handles heat so you know i use that but yeah go ahead and thread that uh cap back on there you know start it you know i usually start it back with what i'm trying to do now and get it on there and like I say we don't fully see that new o-ring you know onto that flange um it's really not a big deal. Uh, like I say, getting it back on there, just make sure you don't cross thread it. So you just gotta be careful. And that was, that's exactly what I was doing. I was being very careful. So once you get it started, get it on there. And like I said, I use that very large wrench. It's so total overkill to take it to take it off, but you didn't put it back on. But like I say, it just was a, was a matter of being able to grab that large flat surface evenly and put a very light torque load on it. Like I said, use your other wrench and everything to get that thing tight, snug it down. And 
pretty much beyond that, we're gonna go to the refill and other acids. The refill is something that can, 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 can throw you off because you'll think that thing is full when it's not full. Uh, what you wanna do is um, put your oil in your axe, spin that drum as you do it, let it sit. Add some more oil to the axe, spin that drum some more, let it sit. As you spin the axe, add more oil, spin the axe, add more oil, spin the axe, add more oil. With the Lucas Hub oil, with the viscosity it is, it's kind of thick, so as you spin the axle, you know what I'm saying, it actually takes the oil around the hub and allows you to add more oil because you have to keep in mind that you have a rear bearing that we installed earlier. That also has to be lubricated, so that oil has to make its way down inside of the hub to that rear bearing and be stopped by that rear seal from coming out the back, but it does have to make its way to the back to lubricate that rear bearing. So um, sometimes people put uh, maybe five or six ounces of oil in one of these axles and they see it in the sight glass and they just go on about their merry way not knowing that possibly 10 minutes later that oil will settle and go down to the other bearing and now the front bearing is being starved. So that's gonna be a big thing with filling that, that axle back up with oil, be generous with the oil and, and use a high quality, high temperature oil. Like I said, I, I use that Lucas and it, it, and it seems to work very well. Uh, haven't had a problem with the axle. Like I said, this, this only issue came up because of the tire in question did what it did and i took the opportunity to make a video i said i'm gonna go ahead and rebuild it and, and, and do my thing but like i said as you add that oil spin and it'll add it'll allow you to add more oil let it sit just let it sit so you know like i said do your 30 minute 30 mile test drive come on back it doesn't even have to be that long it can be 15 miles just get it up to speed and, and be careful with it, test your brakes, make sure everything's working good with it like that at low speed before you take off and get on the open road. Make sure everything's good, pre-trip the rest of the trailer as normal and, and go out there and come back and you're gonna take note of your hub temperatures, you're gonna touch them with your hand when you get back and see if anything's hot or out of the ordinary and you're gonna add all that's needed. And like I said, we're gonna come back, we're gonna jack that trailer back up, we're gonna check each tire, make sure each one of the tires does not have any noticeable amount of play in it, and uh, you're good to go. Behind which, like I said, I'm only bringing it to y'all because I know a lot of people don't run into this axle setup that much, but it is becoming more prevalent and it's being offered on more trailers. But this this trailer right here, I think, is 2019. And it was offered on there. I could have got them on my Gator, but like I said, I ain't just no big fan of the oil, especially with the factory seals. I have to go reseal the whole set of axles on a brand new trailer, dealing with the factory seal, because I don't like them, that just don't last. But like I said, when you rebuild them, get you some good quality parts, good quality bears, and, and, and some triple seals. Uh, like I said, uh, it's not a crazy hard job, but I just want to enlighten y'all, man, because like, I'm gonna tell you the truth. This, this rebuilding of an axle at the local trailer shop, I just saved about $290 on labor. And it only cost me about an hour of my time, but to be honest with you, it was about maybe two two hours or something because I was filming this for you guys. So I hope y'all appreciate it, man. Like I said, stick with me, man. Hey, hit the subscribe button. We invite you if you're new. Hey, come yeah, check out the like playlist and, and see if you can get on, on. Hey, get on with us, man. Like I said, you know, I know what I say about a hater, but like I say, you say that thing, that thing glad, man, boy. Boy, that thing glad, man. I already know it. I really know. So we're gonna do our thing and keep these wheels turning. And we're it's gonna so keep on making it's money so by no saving money, man. I hope they help somebody, man. Like I said, hey, hey learn something new you didn't know yesterday and maybe tomorrow you can make a belt away. Peace.